All right. Welcome, everyone, to a My Hero Academia movie podcast, the podcast where we will talk about the My Hero Academia movie. Probably. I still haven't figured out how to do podcasts yet. <laughs> so tonight I am joined by my good friend uh, Jordan the Cow, or whatever else he goes by. I have trouble keeping track, so introduce yourself. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm Jordan. My name is Jordan, or Cow, whatever you want to call me. I go by both on the internet, so I'll respond to both. Uh, I do. I'm hoping you don't, don't mind me sharing your real name, but it's, it's, that's in your Twitter. I figure yeah, no, you're okay with it. Yeah, let's say my, my Twitter handle is Jordan the Cow, so it's okay. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, honestly, I'm kind of just big chilling. Whatever. I'm having a good time. The movie was sick. Yeah, like we're talking about an anime about heroes, and then Jordan is my hero for some reason. So that's why he's here. This is a is a dope pot. It's it's a it's a dope dope thing. It's a cool movie. You should watch it. Podcast over. Go watch. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I mean, we are kind of like spoil the thing. So if you want to watch the movie unspoiled, you should like go do that. But come back so I get like all the watch time and f- like five million views. That's what we're going for here. Yes. Anything less is sin. So yes, five million views, uh, uh, twelve thousand new subscribers, and at least twenty two likes. Oh, only you're only shooting for you're shooting for five million views with twenty two likes. So you're really not thinking exactly. this is going to do too well, huh? Okay. Oh, people are going to hate this. I know it already. Oh, all right. But that's awesome. okay. Great. Okay. Yes, because you know, like this is such a terrible show. It's like the worst show ever. I don't know why we watched this. Wait, why are you sabotaging me at this moment? I'm trying to get more Twitter followers, not less. Follow me on Twitter, by the way. Just kidding. Yes, uh, there will be a link in the description if I don't forget, and if I do forget, uh, I'll remind, remind you. me because don't I'm forgetful. Worry, you won't forget. Uh, I still will. You know me. <laughs> All right. Uh, so background, so you guys know us. Uh, like, if you've n- watched my channel for long, like, you'll know I'm a big My Hero Academia fan, and my friend Jordan is too. So I thought this would be a good topic for us to talk about, especially like with season four, only like a month or so away. Which, by the way, most people probably want to pin me as like a My Hero fan, but it's fine. It's cool. Like I am. I just don't think like if people guess one of my like. My genre of show, going back on my, my super old videos, they would have never guessed I would have ever been interested in this show. But it's super yeah, good. Yeah, I so. was surprised how much you enjoyed this uh, this show. The movie <laughs> or this movie. It's so good. I was, I was thoroughly impressed. It's like, you're all about this romance and the feelings and the emotions. And now you get a show with the muscular men beating people up and punching stuff. Yes. Yes. Hey, man. The, the king of uh, the king of shoujo uh, has, has to come around sometimes. It's okay. Oh yes, by the way, you should watch Fruits Basket. It's a good show, Joe. Oh, I'm I'm waiting for it to be over. I'm I'm thoroughly uh I'm very, very excited. So I would say more, but that's completely off topic. <laughs> but yes, wonderful show. Uh, so okay, starting off for this uh show, we got a bit of a flashback with uh, All Might living in America. And I thought it was just cool like seeing like you understand where he got the inspiration for who he is from and for all his attacks being named after states. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, that was, that was really cool that we actually finally see that he, he was in America for some time. We saw him in action in America for, like, a little bit. It was also really interesting finding the, uh... The scientist was, like, born and raised there, right? So that kind of gives you a reason as to why he, his suit is that way. And uh, Dave is from California. Like, he said that he named this attack after Dave's home state, so that would make sense. Yeah, so, I mean... I kind of want to know, like, what inspired him to name the attacks after, like, Texas or Carolina or whatever, whatever other attacks he has. <laughs> I'm sure it's just places he was visiting while he was over there and, like, it stood out to him, but... Yeah, or maybe it was, like, he was fighting a villain there, and so he decided to name an attack, like, as he made it up, yeah. based on the state he was in. That's definitely another uh, possibility as well. I mean, it, All Might... I said this, like, while I was watching the movie, I said this out loud, but All Might is the most anime, anime character of all time, and yes, I've seen Dragon Ball, yes, I've read Naruto and most of, and, like, a lot of One Piece... And I've, you know, heard of JoJo's. I just haven't watched it to mess with my... With, I haven't watched it, though, to mess with one of my friends. But, I mean, All Might is probably the most anime, anime character of all time. And I feel like he's also, like, very American. Like, the ideals of an American hero are, like, him with, like, the hard work, super muscular men fighting evil and ideals and all that. Yes. Plus, he has, like, the American flag and his uh, hero uniform like, there's that look. And, like, I think he was at least somewhat based off of Superman, so that fits as well. Yeah, he seems like he's based off, like, a mixture of Superman and uh, Captain America, almost. Like, they're, they're costume designs, for sure. Um, but, I mean, yeah, you know. It, it, it's, it's good. All Might's a really, good, a really good character. The cool thing about My Hero, right, is so... A lot of these long-running, super, you know, four or five season plus shows... 
um, tend to have like a weaker side, uh, tend to be weaker when it comes to side characters. Obviously, the, you know, the main characters are super sick, like Naruto, Luffy, Goku. These 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 characters are all characters that have you know been a part of people's lives for so long. They're so uh, well made and well put together. But a lot of their side characters uh, are are not put together nearly as well and aren't spent uh, a whole lot of time with. But in My Hero Academia, especially, it's pretty much the opposite. Like their side cast is super super strong and. Honestly, some of their side characters are better than some of their main heroes and their main yeah, characters. Yeah, like, so. All Might's one of my favorite characters in all of anime, and mm-hmm. I really like Izuku as a main character, too. Yes. So, it's like, both the main and the main side character, they nailed perfectly. And then, like, we'll talk about some later, I'm sure, but, like, Bakugo, Todoroki, they're all really interesting. They really are. And even, like, the rest of the class that don't get that much time to shine, I like all of them. Exactly, yeah. There's only one bad sh- character in the show, and we'll probably get to that later, but there's, like, only one bad character in the whole show. Um, yeah, even then, I I find him annoying, but I still like what they do with him. I, I nope, nope. He sucks. Uh, He's a bad character. <laughs> okay, Jordan said it. It must be true. Then I'm wrong. <laughs> I, I'm the god of the 2D realm, according to all of A-Fest, So, <laughs> okay, I'm going to start putting those pictures in this podcast for the visuals. Yes, Just you wait. That's fine. Give me more Twitter cup. Follow me on at Jordan the Cow. <laughs> Uh, I wonder how many times you're going to plug yourself by the end of this uh, funny. podcast. This is my channel, so I got to. I got to get to your viewers. <laughs> exactly. Go check out Jordan. He's awesome. He makes content, I guess. I don't know. Do you make content anymore? Uh, yeah, so I'm t- I, I, this is completely off related to the, to the podcast. So if you want to cut this out, you totally, or if you want to trim it down or whatever, you're totally more than welcome to. I won't call you out for it. But uh, No, I'm going to put just, just you tell me to trim it out, in, and I'm going to cut out the rest of what you say. <laughs> okay, that's fine, too. Whatever. Um yeah, so I just I'm st- I started a social media break last night. Already super difficult because like Twitter was my life, and it's just whenever I was waiting for something to happen or like waiting around, sitting around, I would just like scroll through Twitter. And now I don't have that option. But uh, with this break, I don't plan on it being for longer than like a week, maybe two, while I get settled into school and my new job and stuff. But I also plan on hopefully releasing some form of uh, YouTube content during that time, or like some sort of content on the internet. Uh, while I'm gone from social media. So we'll see how that goes, though, because, I mean, I'm me. And, uh, yeah, I say I'm going to be making content quite a bit, and I have all these ideas in my head to do it, and I just don't actually ever execute because I feel like I'm not good enough as an editor or a host or whatever it may be to actually produce it myself. But I just need to kind of get over that fear, I guess, of backlash and just post and be like, whatever. I'm having fun with Yeah, that. just po- post stupid stuff. People might not like it, but whatever. Exactly, yes. Or like it stands up on Reddit and then people think what's wrong with you. But that's okay. That means more people are looking at it. Yes, exactly. More eyes. I've, I've had that happen to me before, but all good, all good. <laughs> okay, so back on the actual topic of My Hero Academia podcast. Uh, yeah, I took some notes in it, but it's, they're like incomplete. So we're just going to kind of go through what I remember happening. And Jordan, feel free to fill in stuff I forget. Yeah, but I'll say, let's just kind of spitball because I took zero notes during the movie. Because I don't know if we made... Oh, no, we did, we did make a plan on making this podcast. But I also got too, like... Uh, I was too uh, thrilled by the movie constantly. Like, it was just too good for me to take my eyes away, honestly. Like, I was not really... Yeah, like, I did not write anything down during the movie. Like, I was thinking about some yesterday, and then, like, I rewatched some clips today, just like, hi, okay, here's something cool, here's something cool. Yeah. So, my notes aren't really good. Uh, But, yeah, after we got got past the dream, All Might and uh, Izuku landed on the island place, and then they met uh, Dave and his daughter, Melissa. Yes. We stand Melissa. She is great. Yep, she is good. I do like, it's kind of weird hearing like these English names, but it makes sense. So it also makes characters' names easy to remember because I am terrible with names. That's true. Yeah, no, I'm not good with names like, either. But like, I'll probably forget Jordan's name at some point during this podcast. I'm sure. It's okay. No big. Yeah. When you do, I'll tell you to follow me on Twitter, but you can't forget it. <laughs> no, and then I accidentally unfollow you. Yes, that's fine too. <laughs> but yes, uh, we got uh, them at the island place uh, melissa ended up giving a deku a tour of like all the uh inventions and stuff they had developed yep. and one of the things i just liked about this part like how much of a fanboy uh izuku is over all the technology there mm-hmm. and just like how perfect it captures how izuku is yeah so we we knew from just watching the show so this if you guys haven't figured out this is gonna be strictly about the movie we're really not gonna dip into the show too much besides to explain a few things maybe but, like, we've known right. from watching the first three seasons of the show that, honestly, if you watch the first two episodes, you realize, okay, Deku kind of knows his stuff about superheroes, which 
to be expected. He's a fanboy who wasn't supposed to be yeah. able to have a quirk, would never be able to be here. He's so a superhero fanboy. Cool. Yeah, so it makes sense, right? But what we didn't really realize was that he was also super into the technical, like, scientist y lab kind of stuff. Uh, all the equipment, like, we, as viewers, we were kind of left to just guess if he was or not, and I don't think a whole lot of people took that into consideration. Um, yeah, and just, like, how much of a, like, society, like, this, the superheroes are a major part of society, so the technology around them would also be really big, too. So it makes sense. Yeah, for sure. And I do I do like how they, they made the effort to be, like, we put this on a on a moving island to help increase security instead of just, like, in a laboratory in Japan and America. We have these things going on. Like, I think the the idea of the entire basically man-made island uh, being able to move around, hosting all the labs from what is, what outside of students, is probably the, the only or one of the very few places in the world that actually make equipment for superheroes and stuff. It's very interesting to actually be able to see the insides of that and see how much Deku already knows versus what he's learning and is just fangirling about. Exactly. And, yeah, it's interesting, too, how they have it be a floating island. And I'm just, like, thinking about all the logistics that would have to, like, surround that. Like, you have to have it float. You have to have it be, like, a self-contained city with, like, food and supplies for everyone. And also make sure it's secure so that, yes, you're floating, but couldn't people figure out where it is and possibly go after it, especially with all the technology that's there? Yeah, you'd have to imagine that it's not super fast, but I, I bet, I bet there's like a thing where it can like uh, glass up over the top or shield up over the top on command, and it can just like dive. Would be my guess. Would be it's like a oh route. yeah, that'd be interesting. But I don't see it taking off into the sky, and I don't see it going super fast. Yeah, because something that big can't really go fast and. I could see diving, or maybe it has some like a, some type of cloaking device that they could use, maybe. Yeah, something like that, I'm sure. Yeah, I feel like we're like that's not meant to be the focus of the movie, so we might be thinking too much. But it's definitely interesting how something like that could work, and we've seen a lot of times in just the series itself how like you have these small things, and then they add up and make a lot of sense when you put everything together. Yeah, for sure. So it shows us a really good job again, of wrapping just, everything up and uh, making sure there's not a whole lot of you know holes right. going around. And yeah, this is kind of a filler-ish story, but maybe we'll get like learn more about it in the future, or maybe the manga like mentioned it, and here they just like fleshed it out more. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, but neither of us have read the manga, so please no manga spoilers below. Yeah, this is definitely not a like I mm, if if you watch okay, we haven't seen any of season four, but what I'm assuming is that they don't think if if you're a producer on this movie, you can't just assume that every person who watched. My Hero Academia seasons one through three is going to also watch the movie. Now, will ninety percent of people who did watch it? Of course, but the ten percent who don't are going to be lost if you just strictly continue off the movie. Well, especially since it's like not available on Funimation or Crunchyroll or things like that, mm-hmm. which will make some people probably only watch stuff there. Yeah. And it's also interesting, though, is that I think this movie could be watched as a standalone. Like, if someone just wants to get, like, a taste of it, or you want to show people, like, here's My Hero Academia, mm-hmm. you could do that, and I don't think they would be all that lost. I, 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 I was thinking about this the night of the movie, actually. Sorry for my stutter. I'm just an idiot sometimes. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, so I was thinking about this the night we actually watched it. And during, when we were actually watching, I was thinking, like, okay... Could I watch this as a standalone movie to show my parents this movie or like show my friends, whatever. Show someone who doesn't watch My Hero Academia or maybe just doesn't watch anime in general. Can I show them this movie? And in my head, I was like, a majority of it, yes. But also like All Might is a character with if, if you've seen the first three seasons or if you've seen like episode one or two again, like the Deku situation, you know, his power is fading. You know, it's like going down quite a bit. Uh... It doesn't really show anywhere in the movie how Deku gets his powers. It just acknowledges that he's not supposed to have them. But it never says strictly, I went and trained with him. So it kind of leads to like some holes if you haven't seen at least season one or two of the show, I would argue. Yeah, well, I think they, at the beginning they had like a flashback to show like he got his power from All Might, if I remember right. Yeah, that's they may they may have, but I guess, I don't know. I, mm, they they might have, yeah. But even still, that doesn't really give a whole... They, they never really give a whole lot of explanation as to why All Might's power is fading, and a lot of that is just because it's the wound, and then I'm guessing there's something else going on that they don't want to explain yet. Uh, maybe we'll see that in the season four. But I'm sure it's not all just because he gave his powers to... De- or he lended his powers to Deku, and 
he has the wound. I'm sure there's other reasons his power is draining significantly quick. Yeah, that's interesting because I thought that those two would be enough to cover the reasoning, but maybe there's something else too. Like mm-hmm. he's like overexerted himself all those years, so that's catching up to him, compounded with everything else. Yeah, I'm sure him staying in muscle form for as long as he was in the movie definitely is going to take a toll. I think it's whenever I, my guess is that they're going to cover it. if they end up not having a third reason. We're, the audience is just going to have to assume that. It was decided to be that way because he's been in hero mode too long or whatever. But well, yeah, anyway. like uh, season one, like he had that big battle against the Noma, which he could tell like he could never like exert himself that much again. Yeah, for sure. And then like the battle of all for one, which we're by the way we're going to spoil through episode th- or season three, mm-hmm. but like the battle against all for one, like that drained everything he had left. Yeah, yeah. So like we got and, the, icon- yeah, I think the every- iconic camera scene because of it. So. Hmm. So, yeah, and I guess this is just another incident because, like, I feel like this is outside the manga's canon, so it's not really something that happened as they were considering it, but this is, like, showing another step. Like, he overexerted himself to fight so that further, like, drained his power. Yeah, for sure. This this movie was really, really good. So, like you said, we kind of, both Greg and I kind of think, uh, we haven't seen the manga, or read the manga, excuse me. We haven't read the manga to know if it's, like, a thing that's slightly mentioned or not mentioned at all, or if it's gone into the detail of the movie. But we were definitely expecting it to be, like, good, but not as good as it was. At least I I definitely thought it was going to be good because I'm like, my hero's sick as hell. If they have a fight scene, it's going to be great. Like, that's just, their animation level for this show is crazy good. And I'm like, this is going to be a good movie. But then it was, like, absolutely amazing. And I was like, holy, okay. Uh, that's what we're going to go with. All right. Gotcha. Nice. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely take it. I don't think I like it as much as the show itself, but I yeah. feel like this was doing everything in My Hero Academia movie needed to do. Exactly, yeah, yeah. No, I'd, I'd agree with that. It's like, it's like, what do people want to see? Okay, they want to see cool action. They want to see the fun characters. They want to see ideas about being a hero and all that. And it basically just checked, uh, went through the whole checklist and did everything right for that. Mm-hmm. And especially for a story that does not like advance the plot itself, It's they really did this as well as they could have. Yeah, for sure. They did a, They did a really good job on it. Right. Um, so, yeah, we got all the uh, students showed up at the island. Mm-hmm. They did not, like, fully explain why it happened, but it's, like, kind of hand wavy. But <laughs> yeah. I liked how they just, like, showed That's up right. out of nowhere. The deck was like, wait, why are you here? Why are you here? Why is Bakugo blowing stuff up outside? Yeah, so Bakugo, Bakugo got invited because he was he won the sports festival. Todoroki got invited because he's uh, Endeavor's son or whatever. Uh, Deku was with All Might. And then past those three, you could like maybe argue that uh, uh, what, what what's what's the girl's have... name with creation? I always forget her name. Uh, Momo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you can argue that like she could also get in because like Todoroki, she's related to someone in the hero program, or at least is high enough up in society to where she was able to get recommended into into UA Academy or into. No, I think they said like her family like gave her four tickets, so she brought her and a few other people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, okay, that's fine. And then the two guys. Were waiters, whatever. It, it kind of all makes sense, but at the same time, then it showed scenes of, like, the other people who weren't invited, but they were, like, in their yeah. hotel rooms? Yeah, they were on the island, too, for whatever reason, but they didn't do anything. Yeah, so I'm like, mm, that's kind of weird, but like, whatever, it's fine. Just go with it. I, we don't need to think too much about that one. Yeah. And I definitely did like it, how they were having the competition to see who could do the fastest, and, like, Bakugo, like, <laughs> set a record, and then Deku's, like, really close, and then Todoroki just blew everyone away. <laughs> Todoroki's like, ice time, yes! Like, I got this, I win, you lose, deal with it. Yeah. Oh, and something I remember you mentioning is, is that you did not watch the series in the English dub, but you did for the movie? Yeah, so I watched the series in English sub, um, I'm, like, 98% sure on that. I think I would have remembered all those voices because I definitely watched at least most of an English dub or English sub. I may have watched some in dub, but yeah, for the movie, we watched it in dub and the voice actors in English are really good. Um, I don't know why I kind of just like watch it with subs normally because that's just what Crunchyroll has a lot of the time or sometimes that's both, but whatever. I, I yeah, guess. and well, this one you have to go to like Funimation if you want to watch a dub, so yeah. that's another step if you don't normally watch yeah, it. Yeah, Papa pays for Crunchyroll. I can't afford both, so I get subs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like Verve and Netflix. I'll probably resubscribe to Funimation for My Hero because I feel like I should watch that legally. Yeah. My Hero's sick. Yeah, and the dub, like, the dub is awesome and just like how well like, they capture all the different personalities there. Mm-hmm. Like Bakugil yelling at people, uh, 
Yeah. Is it could be in a fanboy, All Might being All Might? Yeah, no, the cast for the dub is really, really good. So a lot of shows, um, like honestly, I've seen I've seen some sh- some of my old favorite shows that I used to watch subbed. I've seen them in dubbed more recently, and the one of the one of the things that you don't really realize when you're watching subs is how much is going on on the screen and the couple frames it takes you to read the sentence at the bottom. Oh, Stuff yeah. still happens on the screen during that time. It's not like it goes black and you have a time time to read it. You have to read it as you're it's... watching the show. So uh, when I when I was watching Death Note, I looked it up online. I was like, should I watch the show sub or dub? Because I figured with a show like Death Note, there'll probably be a lot going on the screen. They're like, if you speak English fluently and you do not speak Japanese fluently, watch the dub. It's good, and there's so much going on the screen that you're going to watch the dub. I feel like My Hero, uh, at least the movie, was probably the same. I don't know if I'd want to watch that in dub because there was a lot going on uh, on screen. For me, I just feel like the dubs, they just like, make the voice, like you can connect with what they're saying a lot better than having to like read it and hear the voices and put it together. Yes, yes. That's why I prefer a dub 90% of the time. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, so, yeah, we got the uh, competition thing. Todoroki just beat everyone because he's cool. And then they had, like, the big party that All Might was invited to, and then they were captured, and that's when, like, the real plot of the movie kicked in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the, the big party uh, was kind of cool. It was neat to see, like, a lot of heroes show up. Uh, we didn't mm-hmm. see... Any heroes that, like, we... Re- I don't think we saw any heroes that we've seen before, besides maybe in, like, crowd shots at the sports festival. But it's not like... They had All Might and then some just other heroes that are pro heroes. Yeah. They didn't have, like, All Might and Endeavor and, like, the other of the top ten at this one party, so... Right, it was just, like, All Might and then these other random people who are important, but probably not from, like, the cast that we focus on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and some, uh, yeah, my notes out of order, so something I uh, missed talking about, is how one of the big ideas of this movie is the idea of those without quirks still having an impact, like, especially through their science and the technology they're making. Yeah, that was, that was kind of cool to see, because a lot of time, like, the way that it was portrayed in, uh, for a long time was, if you don't have a quirk, you're, I think it's like, what, 80% of people were, were born with quirks, so four and five, I think, was the ratio? Uh, so yeah. Like, 80%? It- and I feel like the as people are like the uh, younger people are even more likely to have a quirk than those older. Yeah, yeah. That's just my uh, my theory, but that seems to be how they're showing it. Yeah, for sure. I yeah. So we for sure know eighty. We're we're guessing it's probably going to go bigger and bigger as generations grow because that's how evolution works. Um, yep. Because it's probably not evolving out because superhero superpowers are really really helpful to the point where they would stay in the evolutionary chain. So. Uh, say 80% of people have quirks. That means that 80% of people can be heroes. They probably won't be. Very, very few get to be pro heroes, etc., etc. Uh, but what we really didn't see was any good from being a non-quirk user. Exactly. Like, they started off with the showing Nezuka back in season one, like, he wants to be a hero, but he doesn't have any power. Instead of making him still be a hero with that, they just gave him this power, which, it fits for the story, but it shows that you need a quirk to be a hero or to have an impact in the world. Yeah. So, basically, for the first three seasons, we're kind of led to believe that if you don't have a quirk, it's not that you're cast away as being entirely worthless to society, but when it comes to the show, you're not going to be focused on at all besides maybe a victim but like e- even uh well i forget i forget the girl's name but in the sports festival the girl who was like friends with deku who does all the equipment stuff she had a quirk even oh uh, yeah like her eyes had a quirk or whatever um right so where, like like she could see really far it did not really help her to fight yeah but she was able to do stuff like with her technology yeah which exactly. yeah i didn't think about her but that like ties in here with like miss lissa able to use the like give Deku equipment to help him or like Dave did for All Might. Yeah, exactly. Like, so this movie finally shows that if you're a regular person in this world, like you may not be able to be a pro hero because you kind of need powers because all the villains have powers for the most part. Um, Yeah, it's like too dangerous to drive being a hero without any powers. Exactly. But you can still help at least with like the science side of things if you want to. It was interesting to finally see regular people like you and me be useful to this world that seemed like it had almost entirely forgotten about the regular human being just about like it was it's on his way out yeah and personally like science is really cool to me i've worked as a scientist in some way for close to six years mm-hmm. so it's like seeing like a science is being recognized here and that's what i did for those years yeah so absolutely so, see science scientists can save the world even without a quirk exactly yep big fan big fan 
Yep. Yep. Sci- yes, we're your science fan voice, kind of, except when we're not. But that's another topic for another time. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, we have... Uh, then when the heroes were... Basically, they're captured. Uh, yeah, I forget exactly how that happened. They like had the villains show up they, with guns. They took all the heroes hostage. They had the security robots basically lock down the entire island. But they, of course, forgot the kids because no one thinks about the kids who will actually save everyone. Yeah, so... I mean, yeah, <laughs> it, it's really, really good. I would, I would still argue that, like, obviously there's going to be some people that slip the cracks, like regular civilians, whatever. They assumed that most people would listen to the security and that most, the, they probably didn't account for the fact that All Might would bring a guest that is his prodigy, right? Yeah. Because uh, like, like they keep referring to in the anime and the movie constantly, it, like, you are not supposed to, All Might has told basically nobody about how he got his powers. Deku is forbidden from telling people the same way. So I'm sure they didn't think anything of it. Uh, you think, oh, he just brought a kid with him. Yeah, That's whatever. normal. If they even have not record of that, they may not. They were the villains. They came in. They probably didn't immediately search for who who's all on the island aside from big name heroes like All Might and the other characters that we see in me. Right, so they probably thought that's the major threat in these other random people. They probably won't do much. You even saw the people like sitting there in their hotel thinking, oh, it's weird that the phones are down, whatever. Yeah, because most, most people in the hotels, this was, so the first night or whatever was basically just for people in very important positions politically or economically. Heroes, right. uh, scientists who are already on their island and maybe the families. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That was what most people were thinking was going on. So... Heroes were all at the party besides Deku and his friends. They got captured. Or they were heroes that weren't at the party and they were just in the rooms because they were listening to security because they didn't know better. Whatever. Well, well, yeah, Deku and them weren't even supposed to be at the party originally. They just got the tickets from Melissa. Exactly, yes. Yeah, so the party was very, seemingly very, very exclusive. Um, yeah, so you think that they would know, like, oh, okay, we probably have everyone covered. We have the heroes. They're captured. We know most of the guests. So exactly. there might be a few we don't know, but they probably won't be a threat. Yeah, they figure. So they figure... Yeah. Heroes that are in the rooms, whatever, they're not big enough heroes to be a threat to them because they didn't get invitations to the party. The scientists are just that. They're scientists. They don't have quirks for the most part, so you probably don't have to worry about them either. The families don't have to worry about. And the high in power political and economical people can't directly impact you if you're a villain and with a power uh, in the present right. time. And they're either also at the party or they're in their rooms to, like... Yeah, because only the pro heroes can actually attack someone with their quirk. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, but of course they did not take into account Bakugo and Kirishima having no sense of direction and getting lost and running into villains. Yeah, that was a big Which, <laughs> Yeah, that was great. That just like shows perfectly, yes, they're idiots, but that's how they save the day. Yes. Every time. Every time. Mm-hmm. And uh, something else I really like too is that like uh, Deku f- found All Might uh, st- sitting or laying down there and like they had a communication. It was almost telepathically, but it wasn't. They just, like knew what each other was thinking so much. Yeah, so we, we've seen over three seasons how close All Might and Deku have gotten. Uh, and so it's kind of nice to see that pay off uh, in a way that's not just like, here's what you need to do to be powerful. Oh, cool. Thanks, All Might. It was, I'm going to be a badass. I'm going to go be a badass. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Oh, okay. That's fine. Like It was, it was great to see that actually happen where, you, where we realize that All Might is able to put enough trust into Deku to where he's like, all right, just don't get yourself hurt, you know. Like, that's all That's all, all Might is thinking is don't get hurt, but go do the thing. Be a good guy. And All Might was thinking, he should be mad that his student wasn't listening to him. But he thought, he's my successor. He would. I would never listen to someone telling me not to go save the day, so he shouldn't either. Exactly, yeah. It just shows how they like have a similar mindset with that. Like, people are in trouble. I'm going to go save them. Don't care about the rest. 100%. You know, I, big agree. Big agree. Yes. Uh, then we got a lot of action with them fighting all the robots and other people with quirks. And, like, you have the battle where Bakugo and Togedoroki are teaming up against the two villains. And, like, how Bakugo, like, got some of his sweat on the other guy and said, this is like nitroglycerin. And, like, Todoroki knew, okay, fire up, blow him up. Yeah. yeah. And that was, I believe, the only time we really saw Todoroki use his flame, that movie? Yeah, I think, I think it, was, it was. It was, like, it, well, he for sure didn't use it until that point. Uh, I think he may have used it, like, once or twice more, but, maybe like, it was pretty much just blasting the guy with Bakugo's sweat to cause the explosion, and then it was maybe later on 
because fan service of Todoroki being ripped as fuck, by the way. And his shirt <laughs> yeah, like, off because his shirt was destroyed, so he, yeah, he definitely used fire. Yeah. He used fire quite a like bit, just off screen from what I can tell. I think this whole show is just fan service. Like, what do fans of My Hero Academia want? Let's give it to them. <laughs> Pretty much. And apparently a shirtless Todoroki, I'm sure there are some fangirls who will appreciate that. Oh, yeah. And probably, probably some fanboys, too, for that matter. Go off. Yeah. Todoroki's a great character. Uh, They're all so good. Yeah, they are. And I liked how we got to see, like, all the characters use their quirks in some way to stand out. Like, we have Jira, who's the headphone jack girl, and, like, just using hers to listen and spy on people. She's not really a combat hero, but she definitely has a power that's useful to the rest of the team. Yeah, I mean, we the, the only reason why they were able, why, why the uh, students were able to start on anything is because Jira was with them, and she plugged her ear things into the ground so All Might could whisper into the ground and be able to communicate right. with her, and she could communicate to the rest of the team. She played, like, arguably the most or the second most important role in the entire movie by being just being there in that moment was one of the most important right. things in the movie, if not the most important. It just shows how, like, a quirk does not have to be super powerful in, like, a conventional, like, fighting people way to be super useful. Yeah. I mean, w- without her, there was no movie, let's be honest. They would not have known otherwise. All the characters that were like involved in the in that final part, they like without them, there's something that the other characters couldn't have done. Exactly, yeah. Like you have Uraraki using her anti gravity to get the other characters to float, or like uh, Ida's speed, like kick down walls, or like throw the lightning guy in the air so he could like blast them. Or even uh, Mineta, who is your favorite character, he was That's even fucking, useful. Oh, mm. Yeah, I tried not to swear, but I, mm, nope, I hate, nope, that's a bad character. Mineta, Mineta is a bad you character. You can tag me on Twitter and tell me that Mineta is your favorite character. I'll tell you you're wrong, and he's just a bad character. He's like the most, he's the most poorly executed comedy relief I have ever seen in my life. Like, I, ugh, I just, I hate Mineta. I've wanted two heroes ever in, or I've, I've wanted two characters ever in anime to die. Neither of which were inherently villains. One died and one's Mineta. So, so far, I was one for one. Let's try to make it two for two, fam. I'm sure it's not going to happen. I'm going to be pissed. He's going to grow up and he's going to be like number two hero. And it's just going to bug me for the rest of my years. That would be that would be interesting. I'm okay seeing that. Yeah. Also, I sent you something on Twitter for when you're back on Twitter. Okay, can't wait. I'm sure it's Mineta's uh, character, and I'm going to tell you that you're wrong, but I'm excited. I look forward to your reply when you get around to it. And just another uh, small tidbit I really liked is how Deku only brought the glove with him because he could not get it off. Yes, yes. That was very good. Yeah. Yes, that's like another Deku thing to have happen, and it ended up like... Because it would not make much sense for him to bring a glove with that to him to like a formal event or anything. Mm-hmm. But it was like I could see him not being able to figure out how to get the glove off and bring it because of that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, and speaking of formal event, we have the girls all in their formal attire. Yes, and that was great to see. Yes, yes, my hero yes. girls are so good. Yes, Jordan was very excited when we got to that part. <laughs> Jiro's so cute. They're all so cute. Ochaka. Ochaka was kind of that. Odomaka was kind of that. Yeah. Uh, like, oh. Durarara yeah, the whole cast is great. Me. Wait, who? Durarara? The show? The, oh, that show. Yes, that show is good. <laughs> Sorry, like I was confused why you're bringing that up, but sure, the good show. Go watch it. Yeah. I should watch the rest of it. I, I, was, I was joking that the her name sounds like Durarara. <laughs> Udomaka yeah, or whatever. But, Main girl. Now, now I can't say it. It's Ochako or Araka? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that right? I always feel like I like can't pronounce it. There's a lot of R's really close together in there. But, like they're just spaced just, enough to make it hard for you to say. Just to say best girls. That's yeah. good enough. Yeah. They're all so cute. We love them, man. We love them. The guys like all dressed up too. Like they were they were stunting. They were killing Yeah. It. They were killing it. Well, I also liked it how, like, Bakuda didn't bring a suit, so he had to use Kirishima's. Yes. It's like, I thought you wouldn't bring a suit. Here we go. Here's a suit for you. He's just like, damn it. Now I have to go. It's like, well, what character just thinks, okay, I know my friends. They're not going to bring a suit. I need to pack a spare. Like, <laughs> I don't even have a second suit. Yeah, All right, so if he goes somewhere, I'm not going to lend you a suit, Jordan. I'm sorry. 
That's that's okay. I feel like your suits wouldn't fit me that well. <laughs> I kind of want to see that. Oh my lord! I would look like <laughs> I would look like someone who's like five feet tall and reality I'm a six foot tall. Okay, next uh, anime convention, you're taking pictures of my suit for the memes. Oh god, okay. It's the, the worst idea of the day so far, but that's okay. <laughs> And then after the characters climb 200 flights of stairs, which I'm amazed that they can climb that many. Yeah. Well, okay, like, they, they climbed 80, creepy. and then after that they were, like, running around and somehow was getting up. I don't know if it was, like, elevators or if it was stairs. We saw some of it was, like, using Erotica's powers to, like, get up. But still. Yeah, I, I think they climbed most yeah, of the 200. E- even still, they climbed minimum, minimum, 80 flights of stairs at full speed and still being able to execute fights use their powers, and right. seem like they are perfectly healthy immediately after climbing 80 flights of stairs. And the girls were probably in, like, heels or something, too, because you saw Melissa took her shoes off, which makes sense. Yeah, at some point, like, Melissa took off, takes off her heels, and we have to assume that either the rest of the girls weren't wearing heels to begin with at the party, but in reality, mm-hmm. uh, many, like, formal wear, like, events require women to be wearing heels or something fancier like that, so... Even still, like, most fancy shoes, even guys' fancy shoes, aren't super comfortable. So, I'm right. sure all I, the characters gonna... by the end were running around their socks. I mean, let's be real. <laughs> exactly. Like, I'm not going to wear my good shoes up to 80 flights of stairs. Yeah. Actually, I'm probably going to die before I get to 40, but that's okay. Yeah, I would, too. It's okay. We're not supposed right. to be superheroes. <laughs> they are. Right. I feel like I need to train more in case I ever need to climb 80 flights of stairs. Yeah. I agree. But yes, they somehow reach the top without being completely exhausted because they're superheroes and not, and not uh, like out shaped people like us. Mm-hmm. And then we got the final battle. We got the revelation that Dave was the one behind the attacks, which that was the. I kind of saw that twist coming when we got close, but I thought it was like very interesting with some of the ideas that they had surrounding that. Yeah, for sure. They definitely like played it really well. Because a lot of times mm-hmm. uh, shows are like struggling or uh, just. They're like, we need a twist because it's a movie and we have about eh, 30 minutes left. Let's throw a twist in there before the big fight, right? So most shows would kind of just make something up that's like, whatever. Kind of like this. Like, you would kind of figure that this would be like one of the twists. But they executed it well enough to where it didn't feel like it was just thrown together. You can tell it was like very carefully planned by the directors and the producers and the original author and everything. And I also think it really worked because it tied into to the themes of My Hero as a whole is like looking to the next generation of heroes. Yes. Well, Dave was doing that so that All Might could return to his previous strengths. Well, instead the message is no, like All Might's time is ending. It's time to like build up the next generation of heroes. It turns out Deku was badass, dude. <laughs> I think we already knew that, but yes, he was. Believe it or not, Deku it, was super, super cool. I was like, you show, like, how strong he is all the time. It's like, he would be, like, he could probably uh, compete with All Might if he could use his powers at full strength. It's like, he just can't, though, because he destroys his body unless he has, like, the glove or something or some other way to, like, uh, absorb the blow. Which, by the way, he broke, like, instantly. Homie threw, like, no, he... three punches in it and it broke. Well, and Melissa even said that she thought it could take, like, three uh, of All Might's full power attacks. Yeah. So, I mean, so like we knew that it would slow, we knew they were probably going to be destroyed by the end of it, but it makes me think like will they develop other technologies like that for him in the future? I'm I'm sure they will. I mean, yeah. It, the the other thing I'll mention is I don't think Deku ever did like he may have used kicks to like open up doors and like maybe bust up a few enemies, but none of his like big powerful moves in this whole movie was like a kick. They were all punches. Which is interesting because during the show, a lot of his stuff translated over to kicks instead. It did, but that was only after the all, my, or all for one battle. That's true. And this movie took place before that, so it was before oh, he it? was really using his feet much. Yeah, because like all my still has his powers. Well, yeah, but I thought in the show he could like still kind of use them. It just wasn't going to be that big. Because like he he got on the phone. And they talked about during the movie. They he like was talking to the guy. At the very end, because he ends up having, like, spoilers, more than one power. And he's like, yeah, no, I talked I talk to the guy you couldn't beat. And then, like, I thought somehow All Might and All for One were communicating for, for a second, but maybe not. I could be uh, No, I think that was, like, a flashback to All for One, like, looking on because he knew what was going on. Yeah, maybe. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. And I think with All Might's power, like, he can still do his muscular form for a little bit, but we see it, like, 
in the show, it only lasts for a couple of minutes before it goes away again. Mm-hmm. And he cannot fight in that form. He's like, looks strong. Yeah, 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 that's true. So in this case, like he's still able to fight pretty much at full power, just not for all that long. Okay. So that's yeah, fair. that was before the all for one battle. Yeah. That makes sense. All right. Um, Oh, and then we have, like, all the explosions and the fun, like, all-out battle at the end, which is just incredible to watch. It was so good. It was really, really, really good. Yeah, I don't think I can say much more than, yes, it was really, really good. Yeah, I don't want to spoil it, but it was really well done. The animation of it was really sick. We got to learn a lot. Uh, We got to see a lot of character growth just in that one battle. Uh with, not just with Deku, because obviously we're going to see him grow, like, the most in the show, since he is... It's it's him... him it, the whole show, you have to remember, is also his future self telling the story of how he became the number one hero. So, like, he, they spoil it from the start of the show, like, he ends up being the number one hero way down the line, and this is him retelling the story. Yeah, I actually, my theory about that is that he's, like, doing what All Might was at the beginning, is, like, telling the story to the next holder of One for All. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be so, something like that. So we're, we're expected to see Deku growing the most. It makes the most mm-hmm. sense, right? Because it's his story. Um, but we also got to see a lot of character growth uh, in the other characters, including All Might, um, as well as just characters we met in the show, uh, or in the movie, excuse me, as well as like the rest of the classmates who were also at, at the scene of the, uh, of the event. It was really interesting to see them all. We'll hang out and yeah. we'll uh, kick ass and just together. See them all combining forces for the final battle. Like, that's the perfect way to end a movie like this. It was really good. And then... I was going to say something else, but you made me forget it. So, keep talking. Oh, God. See, I was waiting for you to say something else. I, I oh, wait, I got it. Uh, okay. The music for this uh, movie was... Oh. Like, the... A lot of the music I like recognized from the show. They had a couple of songs I think were new. Yeah. And just when I was rewatching clips, I was also like doing something else too. Like see, like it was in the background, seeing what points do I want to make, and then I just like kept feeling myself getting pulled into the music again, like air drumming it or whatever. Yes, no, the the music in the movie was great. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the songs, like you said, were either directly from the show or slight remixes of songs from the show, perhaps like just the same song with like maybe a different like added on drums or added on more guitar extended the song whatever basically just like small remixes of the original soundtrack from the show of course but then i do i I feel like there was a couple tracks that weren't that we haven't heard in the show that were in the movie so it was a really good soundtrack i forget there are a couple of scenes i just remember seeing like oh this is a new song or when i was rewatching just like this is a new song or so yeah, the My Hero Academia soundtrack is one of my favorites just because like how much energy and emotion it gives the whole show. Yeah, I mean it it does its job. It makes the so music and anime, depending on the genre, has very, very different and distinct jobs. And I've always thought that My Hero does a very good job with its music and how it handles the show and how it adds to it instead of just being there also. The music adds to the show and brings something else for the viewer to pay attention to, analyze, be a part of. It helps enhance the experience of watching the show. Uh, and that's super important. So for action shows, you want something that hypes up the viewer and makes sense as to why they're fighting to it. Whereas you you see shows are like Slice of Life, so you're going to hear a lot of soft pianos and string instruments because it's just your your everyday life. The music's just on in the background, whatever. But in, in action shonen shows, you definitely expect for there to be lots of, you know, big, big instruments, very loud, uh, very hopeful and uplifting but at the same time very uh like challenging and sharp uh almost yes like you want to feel the challenge they're facing feel them yes. overcoming it and just with the my hero one especially for an action show like has makes it so much more emotional than it would be otherwise mm-hmm. no, absolutely i mean this like i said the score in the show is really good and the score in the movie is also amazing like that that's one thing that they're not skipping out on that's you, you hate to see shows skip out on music because some people are like, oh, music's a small part, whatever, just make the animation really good, it's fine. But at the same time, the music just, the music portrays just as important of a story as the rest of the show does. It definitely helps contribute to it as, as well. So it's definitely something you can't sleep on. Yeah, it's like the music is oftentimes very subtle too. Like you don't notice the impact you ha- it has unless you really go like focus for it. Exactly, yeah. And like animation is very obvious. Oh, it looks cool. Therefore, I'm into it. But the music is like just as important. It's just as there, but you just don't see it, so you don't like notice it as much. Yeah, hundred percent agree on that, for sure. 
right? Uh, so I've, we've pretty much gone through the movie. Are there any other thoughts or things about the movie that you wanted to bring up? I mean, honestly, I recommend, I recommend pretty much everybody to see this. If you, like, just absolutely hate shonen shows, uh, then maybe it's not for you. But, I mean, I'm not a super big fan of shonen, uh, especially when I first got started when I was watching anime. I pretty much only watched, like, I guess I guess shonen's the bad word for it because technically shows like Sakura So aren't shoujo. They're technically shonen. They're just a genre that's yeah, like, seen more shoujo shows. You're not into like the action shonen though. You're yeah, yeah. The so like ones. typically when I started out, I didn't watch a whole lot of the action shonen shows. Um, but like even still, the the show is just amazing. And if you want mm-hmm. a little taste of the show. There's some parts you may not immediately understand, but it's also not going to spoil the show too much for you. So if you're wanting like, okay, give me two hours to convince me to watch three seasons of this show, I would for sure recommend the movie. The movie is really, really well done. Yeah, like, I think I might just show it to some of my family who's not an anime because like, here's, you might appreciate this since I know you've liked some anime in the past. Exactly, yeah. And it's like easy enough to get into. It's not like filled with like the anime weirdness fan service and all that. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really well done. It's it's tame uh, enough for your average viewer. It's tame enough to where yeah. if your parents walk in, you're probably safe, right? I'm like, um, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, let let's be honest. Some shonen shows aren't that way. There's there's like shows, uh, you know. I mean, Naruto literally has a jutsu where he just turns himself into a super hot chick, and then he has that same jutsu but multiplied to a thousand, where he becomes one thousand super hot chicks, like. That's just a part of Naruto, and my hero doesn't really have that almost at all. Kind of, maybe like a little bit, but it's significantly more rare than you would see in other shows. Yeah, there's like occasional pull episode, which was wasn't even that bad. Yeah, for sure, it was very tame when you're comparing it to a lot of other shows. But I mean, this is definitely a show I'd recommend for most people to, to uh, a movie for most people to watch. If you're yep, a solid movie from one of my favorite series is basically how I'd describe it. If you're looking, for, if your friends are like, I don't know if I want to watch My Hero Academia, uh, I don't want to start season one and then quit on the show, you know, whatever, because I have some friends that are like that, like, I don't want to drop a show, but that means that they don't want to pick up shows as much. Show them the movie. It's like, I think it was an hour and a half, hour 45, like around two, like two hours max. I think it was like an hour and a half or hour and 45 minutes. Um, it was an hour and uh, 35 minutes. Yeah, so it's like, literally just look up the movie, watch it, spend about an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes, whatever, and uh, you're good. And then marathon all three th- seasons in like a week if you're like some people. They're going to. I mean, they're going to love it. It's great. It's a great movie. I mean, that's what my brother did when he got into the show. It's like two weeks he watched two seasons. Like I said, I mean, hey, the, it's a really good show. The music on it is amazing. The animation is really, really good for a show, like especially for a shonen where it's an action scene where you feel like they're gonna be kind of just flashing through the flames as fast as possible uh, because it's like, oh, they're going so fast. I don't really need to draw out their full character model and stuff. Uh, My Hero Academia really doesn't cut a whole lot of corners when it comes to that. So it's really yeah, interesting. They make the that. animation as good as they can for this, especially for the scenes that really matter. It is crazy how good this animation is. I'll be honest. I mean, I'm coming from a background in like rom-coms where most like 99% of their budget goes into making the show look as pretty as possible because that's how mm-hmm. you catch the viewer's eyes. And typically people who are watching rom-com care more about animation and story than just about anything else. Um, yeah. And this show looks immaculate. I mean, this My Hero Academia looks damn good. And the movie is no slouch either. Yeah, that reminds me, if you want really good action animation, uh, the same studio also did Mob Psycho 100, which has, I'd say, the best action animation in all of anime. Okay. So, yeah, go check that one out. It looks really good. And it also has a very, like, down-to-earth story, which, yeah, I think you'll like it. Mm-hmm. There are lots of shows I would recommend to people. Overall, like this is for sure on the on a scale of ten, this is between this is like somewhere in the range of eight and ten. I think. I, I don't. Yeah, I'd say probably. I think I give it an eight. Yeah, but I, say, I don't think people are scoring it much lower than an eight. They must have really yeah. had to have missed a lot, or just be super anti shonen, anti my hero to to give it much lower than an eight. It was really yeah. well done. I have a friend who gave it a seven on Mal. I don't think we're friends anymore. Yeah, I mean, I, I want to, I want to trust him. So, all right. So uh, wrapping this up, uh, Jordan, uh, plug your Twitter like three more times. <laughs> One please. last time. Okay. 
Uh, guys, follow me on Twitter at Jordan the Cow, J O R D A N T H E E C O W, Jordan the Cow. Uh, that's pretty much where you can find me most of my time. Unfortunately, by the time this goes up, I will be into my Twitter break, my social media break. Yeah. Other than that, yeah. I don't have a whole lot to plug. Go check out my YouTube. I'm, I mean, honestly, everything's the same as, as my Twitter. Look me up on social medias. I'm pretty much just Jordan the Cow across all of them, as far as I know. Yeah, you can find him on ten. You can find him on Tinder. You can. I, I did. I did make a Tinder as a meme at A Fest. That was a good meme. Yes, and then you, then that other meme blew up, and yeah, we like and now you're famous. Meme, yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Oh, and also, if you want to hear more of us talk about anime and other random topics, check out our podcast, the Speak Anime Podcast. We will hopefully have a second video out sometime this year, but no promises. We should have one hopefully done soon. As soon as Jason's pretty much ready, as long as we can get our work schedule still on it, we should be good. Yeah, I think we have like three completely opposite work schedules, so yeah. it's, it's a challenge. It's a but yes, we're hopefully going to be posting more on there. My goal is for two videos this year. We'll see if that happens. <laughs> All right, well, that's been it for me. Thank you for having me on, Greg. I appreciate it. It's always fun talking to you, man. Yes, thank you for doing this with me. I knew we had to do something together, and I was thinking, okay, what can I do as Jordan? Let's say I still needed to see more Sakura So before I can. Ooh, my hero. Let's do that. Yeah, as soon as you finish Sakura So, or honestly, most romance shows, hit me up. We can go on here and talk about them all you want. We're, I'm super down. Maybe maybe Fruits Basket. Yes, yes. As soon as I finish, once, once Fruit Basket's all done, give me like... Two or three days to binge it, and then we can make another talk about that. I'm sure. Yeah, it's yeah. I might. Yeah, I have ideas for fruits basket. I actually do a weekly fruits basket podcast on my friend uh, Bento's channel, go so check go check out. out that. Yep. Go check out. Yes, yeah, so if you want to podcast. hear me uh, fanboy about a romance anime, it actually happens. Yeah, go for it. Uh, other than that, guys, check out Sakura So, and then I'm out. Sakura So's good. All right, thank thank you, Jordan. All links in the description, and I will talk to you next time. Peace out. Goodbye.